Hello folks, welcome back. This is Kweku. I'm a pharmacist. This channel is dedicated to healthcare information as well as pharmacy stuff. So feel free to hit the subscribe button if this is something that you find interesting or useful. Today we're going to be discussing the medication hydroxychloroquine, which is marketed under the brand name Plaquenil. We're going to be taking a look at the uses, the side effects, the precautions, as well as I'll do a little comparison between hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine itself. You know, sometimes you hear them used interchangeably and you wonder which is which and why one will be used in preference to the other. So I'll do a little comparison between the two. So we're gonna move straight on into the uses. Firstly, it is used in the treatment and prophylaxis or prevention of malaria. It is used in lupus erythematosus as well as in rheumatoid arthritis. It is referred to as a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, or DMATs as they call them for short, because it actually works on the immune system to slow down the progression of rheumatoid arthritis, hence the name disease-modifying. As of the time of making this video, hydroxychloroquine is currently under investigation in the post-exposure prophylaxis and treatment of COVID-19, or coronavirus to put it in very simple terms. I must say that safety and efficacy has not yet been determined as of the making of this video. Now side effect. One of the key side effects of hydroxychloroquine is retinal disorders. Hydroxychloroquine can cause toxicity related to the eyes, including irreversible retinopathy or damage to the retina, which may lead to vision impairment. You know, it may lead to a decrease in dark adaptation. Or in other words, the ability of the eye to become visually sensitive after remaining in a dark place becomes impaired. Hydroxychloroquine has also been known to cause color vision abnormalities. It has also been known to cause what is called the visual field defect, where one loses a part of his usual field of vision. Another area of side effects include allergic and dermatologic reactions. Hydroxychloroquine has been known to cause urticaria or hives, rash or itching you know this is something that i am personally familiar with having grown up in a malaria endemic area and having taken chloroquine several times in my life i can tell you that that itching is very intense if it does for care and it's very uncomfortable it's been known also to cause hair color changes another side effect worth mentioning is hypoglycemia this can be very serious and sometimes even life-threatening hydroxychloroquine is also known to cause to set the points which loosely translated means the twist of peaks. It's a type of abnormal heart rhythm, which can be very serious in some individuals, especially if they take other medications that also have the ability to affect heart rhythm. Another group of side effects are hematologic or blood disorders. Key among them is aplastic anemia, which is a condition where the body stops producing enough new blood cells. There's also been a report of thrombocytopenia, which is also a condition characterized by low platelet counts. You know, platelets play a very important role in clotting or stopping bleeding after injuries. Hydroxychloroquine has also been associated with agranulocytosis, which is a condition characterized by low white blood cell count, or specifically a low neutrophil count. Hydroxychloroquine has also been associated with hearing loss and some skeletal muscle disorders, you know, leading to progressive weakening of some muscles. Now let's shift our attention to some precautions. The first one is to be cautious when it is used in combination with other medications that also have the ability to affect heart rhythm. Some of these medications include very common ones like antibiotics, ciprofloxacin or clarithromycin. Actually, I'll put a link in the description below to an article that actually talks about this and lists these medications in a table. So you can check it out if you are interested. People with liver disease or who consume too much alcohol or use other medications that are known to be hepatotoxic or cause damage to the liver should also use hydroxychloroquine cautiously. In those people, usually a dose adjustment may be necessary. People with pre-existing conditions of psoriasis should also be very careful as hydroxychloroquine can cause a severe exacerbation of psoriasis. Also, because it can cause so many severe blood issues or hematologic issues, continual monitoring is definitely highly recommended. And for anybody developing any of these conditions, your provider will work with you 
to either find an alternative or maybe even to discontinue it altogether. As I mentioned in the side effects, hypoglycemia is a possibility for people taking hydroxychloroquine irrespective of whether they are taking diabetic medications or not. But the risk is even higher for people who are diabetic and are already taking diabetic medication. So for such people, extra precaution and monitoring is highly recommended. Hydroxychloroquine can also cause gastric irritation and should be used with caution in patients with gastric disease. It can be taken with meals or milk to minimize such gastric irritation. Now with respect to the similarities and the differences between hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, it's very minimal. It's just a structural difference. The hydroxychloroquine is said to be hydroxylated chloroquine. That means that it has an extra um, group. That it's called a hydroxy group or an OH group, as you can see over here, added to the structure of chloroquine. I'm sure most of us are not interested in knowing the structure of these things anyways. But with respect to the side effects, um, it's noted that hydroxychloroquine actually seems to have a lesser side effect profile when it comes to things like the retinopathy and issues to do with the eyes. St various studies have shown a lower incidence of that occurring in people taking hydroxychloroquine versus chloroquine. And also chloroquine is mainly indicated or used for the treatment of malaria as well as a parasitic infection called the non-intestinal amoebic infection. So chloroquine is not FDA approved in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis nor lupus, unlike hydroxychloroquine. As always, thank you for staying through. If you found this video useful, please do me a favor by hitting the like button. It kind of helps me with the YouTube algorithm to have the message reach more people as possible. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I thank you so much once again.